All right, so this is an example with a plastic sphere. Um, it doesn't say that explicitly, but problem number 39 is something where it says that you've got a radius, a 20 centimeter radius ball with, that is uniformly charged. That to me means that it is all the charges existing throughout. the ball. And what does that mean? It must be made of an insulator. Otherwise, if it's a conductor, all the charge would go to the outside surface. So in my mind, I'm visualizing something like this, where we've got a 20 centimeter radius here. I'll do that as 0.2 meters and the charge is throughout. And I'm drawing a two-dimensional drawing, kind of crappy, of what should be a three-dimensional thing. But it says that the charge is spread uniformly throughout that. So the first part of this is figuring out the volume charge density. Well, density is just something per unit volume. Oftentimes, mass density is kilograms per cubic meter. This is charge density per cubic meter. So what I need to do for part A is I need to figure out um, <laughs> and basically take these coulombs divided by the cubic meters. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The surface area, by the way, is 4 pi r squared. Oops, forgot the pi. Um, which is the derivative of this. That's the only shape which the derivative of the volume is equal to the surface area, by the way. So in this particular case, uh, we've got 4 thirds pi radius of 0.2 meters cubed. So when I do that, let's do uh, 0.2 cubed times 4 divided by 3 times pi. I get a really small number like 3.35 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic meters. That even seems high, but we'll see. I might go back and double check that. Yep, that seems about right. Okay, so the charge, I think this is N, is volume charge density, a weird number. So Q over V, so that's going to be 80 nanocoulombs, so that's 8.0 times 10 to the negative 7th coulombs, all over 3.35 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic meters. So... Gives me a small number that agrees, makes sense kind of with what I had um, had earlier, a bigger, a more negative exponent above than below. So I end up with 2.39 times 10 to the negative fifth coulombs per meter cubed. So that's the charge density. So the next spot is asking you how much charge is enclosed by spheres of radius 5, 10, and 20 centimeters. So here's how you kind of want to think about that. If I've got a 5 centimeter sphere here, a 10 centimeter sphere there, I that drew that way too small. So this is 0.1 meters, 0.05 meters, and then the whole sphere is 0.2 meters. Um, the first one, 5 centimeters, what I have to do is, so this is for B, I don't have to find the volume for, for this, and then I'm going to multiply it by the charge density. So volume of a 5 centimeter sphere is, again, 4 thirds pi 0.05 meters Q. 
huge. Going with a 10 centimeter, 4 thirds pi, 0.1 meter cubed. Volume of the 20 centimeter, well, we already figured that out, which is 3.35 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic meters. Now, if you're sharp here, you might be able to think proportionally and realize that the only thing that's changing is the radius. And since that's cubed, um, if I have half the radius, I should have one half cubed or one eighth the volume. So I could simply take this divided by eight to get this value, take this divided by eight to get this value. So the volume of a five centimeter sphere is 1 64th, I believe the volume of a 20 centimeter sphere, because that's one fourth cubed, four times four times four is 64, so that's 1 64th. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this just in case. It's kind of a double check for my other thing, 0.05 cubed times four divided by three times pi. So this gets me 5.24 to another negative fourth cubic meters. And now if I multiply that by eight, it should give me the value 4.19 times 10 to the negative third cubic meters of what I end up having for this middle value. So I'm gonna plug it in though and just see. Oops. It does come out with that, so that's nice. 4.19 times 10 to the negative third cubic meters. And this we've already got. So now if I want to find out how much charge is in the, that, I need to multiply that by the charge density, which is going to be constant. Well, here's the nice thing about this 20 centimeter one. I know 80 nanocoulombs is how much is enclosed. It's the entire amount. So I can just simply say 8.0 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. Since the volume of this is an eighth as much, this should be one times 10 to the negative seventh coulombs. And the volume of this is eighth of this, it should be 1.25 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs, if I'm doing it right. But what I can do is take this volume, multiply it by this charge density as a double check. So 2.39 times 10 to the negative fifth. So I'm gonna check that now, 2.24. To the negative fourth times 2.39 to the negative fifth. That does give me 1.25 times 10 to the negative eighth, which is about what I said I would get. And this one, if I multiply that by eight. I don't know why I did times two three times, but don't worry about that. One times 10 to the negative seventh. So again, I could use proportions for a lot of that. I showed you about the math. The last part here is what's the electric field strength. So now the thing that's interesting about this is you might think that the electric field strength is getting stronger because you're holding so much more charge at each radius, or you might think it's getting weaker because you're further from the center. So it's really a question of which of those is increasing more. In fact, since every doubling of radius um, quadruples the surface area, 4 pi r squared, and every doubling of the radius ends up multiplying by 8 the amount of charge enclosed, I'm betting that the electric field would increase in strength. So the way we could think about this is the electric field at 0.05 meters. You could either do kq over r squared 
or you could think about um, Gauss's law. which is like that. Either one of these will give you the same thing because here you're going to need to figure out the area of that surface area of the sphere, um, which is 4 pi r squared, and you're going to end up with this, which basically is the same thing as this. So I'm going to use this formula since I recognize it's the same. So 9 times 10 to the 9th, the charge that's enclosed at that point, I had figured out before. Uh, that, yeah, I did. Okay, it's up here. 1.25 times 10 to the negative 8th coulombs. The distance that you are away from the center is 0 0.05 meters squared. So when I do this, 9 times 10 to the 9th is 1.25, 10 to the negative 8th, divided by 0.05 squared. It gives me field strength of 45,000 meters per coulomb. I may want to check that again. And that gives me the same number again. So now here, for the 10 centimeter one, I'm going to use this method again. So the charge is going up by a factor of 8. The radius is only going up by a factor of 4. Here's the amount of charge I've got. eight times as much. That's 0 0.10 meters squared. So I'm anticipating this is going to double the field strength. Ninety thousand. And then finally I could do the same thing, but I should at this point have recognized what's happening. That better be 180,000. I'll go through and check. What? Hold on. Something screwed up here. Oh. No. This is. Hold on. 8 times 10 to the negative 7. That's what I screwed up with. It does not make sense that it would be less. Let's try it again. Hundred and eighty thousand. Okay, so I trust my logic more than I trust the calculator, as you could tell. So hopefully those make sense to you, and I'll upload the answers to those as a PDF as well.